how Newton might interpret gravity was sufficient to permit us to fly from the Earth to the Moon at any point. Get yourself lost in the ticking hands of time contemplating whether how we might interpret it is simply the tip of the worldly chunk of ice on its head. His disclosure isn't simply a hypothesis. A key could open the ways to the secrets of the universe, uncovering a universe more many-sided and moving than we at any point thought for even a second to envision. How does Brian Cox's new hypothesis challenge our customary comprehension of time? And what are the potential suggestions for our impression of reality? Join us on a captivating investigation through the archives of time itself as we dive into Brian Cox's recently uncovered earth-shattering hypothesis on the concept of time in the huge universe around us. Secrets are pausing to be uncovered, and a portion of these secrets involve perplexing things about time and gravity, which are fundamental portions of our reality. Imagine a world where time acts unusually, it can, all things considered, dial back or accelerate. Additionally, the power that keeps us on the ground probably won't be what it appears to be. This is the domain of Albert Einstein's hypothesis of relativity, where how we might interpret time and gravity goes off in an unexpected direction. Albert Einstein, a notable name, gave us a better approach for taking a gander at the universe through his hypothesis of relativity. His work established the groundwork for understanding how time acts in various circumstances, particularly when going at incredibly high rates. It all started in the mid-20th century when Einstein proposed two earth-shattering speculations, the unique hypothesis of relativity and the overall hypothesis of relativity. The unique hypothesis of relativity, published in 1905, changed how we might interpret reality. In basic terms, it lets us know that the regulations of physical science continue as the same for all eyewitnesses who aren't speeding up, no matter what their movement. This hypothesis presents the possibility of relativistic impacts, including the renowned thought that time can expand or dial back under certain circumstances. One captivating psychological study used to make sense of time enlargement is the light clock. Imagine being inside a spaceship moving unquestionably quick, nearly at the speed of light. Inside the spaceship, there's a light beam skipping between two mirrors opposite to the heading of movement. As indicated by the laws of material science, the speed of light is consistent for all spectators, so the light bar must seem to go along a more drawn-out slanting way. The time it takes for the light bar to travel its way ought to be the same for both the eyewitness inside the spaceship and the one outside. However, since the way is longer for the outside spectator, it seems like it would take additional opportunity for the light to finish its venture. This clear time contrast between the two eyewitnesses is what Einstein called time enlargement. Time eases back down for the eyewitness moving relative to the fixed eyewitness. In this situation, time acts in an unexpected way contingent upon your movement. Getting at how things change when they move quick, known as relativistic impacts, isn't simply a hypothetical thought. Researchers use huge machines called molecule gas pedals like the Large Hadron Collider to make particles go really quick, nearly as quick as light. When things move this quick, we need to contemplate time in an exceptional method for making exact predictions and estimations. Albert Einstein concocted the unique hypothesis of relativity in 1905, and it changed how we see the universe, particularly when it comes to time and development. This hypothesis challenges what we could normally think. It says that the standard guidelines of material science are no different for everybody, regardless of whether they're not moving. This is unique from our ordinary experience, where we could feel that assuming something is already moving and we add more speed, it gets quicker. However, Einstein's hypothesis says there's a greatest speed that nothing can go quicker than, and that is the speed of light. In this perspective, Occasions that appear to occur simultaneously for us probably won't appear to be that way for individuals moving around nearly as quick as light. One more idea that comes from this exceptional perspective is length compression. This means that if something is moving, it looks more limited in the bearing it's moving when seen from a fixed spot. Then there's the renowned condition. Equals. Two. Equals MC. Two which demonstrates the way that energy and mass can change into one another. This is critical for understanding how small particles act while they're flying around super quick and furthermore for things like what occurs at the point when molecules split in atomic responses. In this present reality, exceptional relativity isn't simply an extravagant hypothesis. It's something we use in regular advances like GPS. 
When GPS satellites convey messages to your device, they're moving, and on account of this movement, time acts a little diversely for them. On the off chance that we didn't consider this time expansion impact in our GPS computations, your route would be off track. So, exceptional relativity instructs us that time isn't something similar for everything and everywhere. It relies upon how things are moving. This thought challenges our thought process about reality. It's like saying our typical comprehension of the universe is a knot. As indicated by the unique hypothesis of relativity, time isn't fixed. It's affected by movement. Some essential ideas, like the speed of light always remaining something very similar and how energy and mass are associated, have been demonstrated by various trials. But there's more. Enter Albert Einstein's general hypothesis of relativity from 1915. This hypothesis dives deep into the connection between gravity and how the universe is organized. It stirred up the old thought that gravity is merely the power that pulls things from a good ways. Rather, it lets us know that gravity occurs because existence is bended or bowed. It's like saying, hey, gravity isn't a secret power. It's just how things normally move in the universe. According to Brian's grasping of general relativity, it means pondering the universe as a four-layered substance combining three dimensions of space and one of time. In this system, enormous things like stars, planets, and even us influence how reality is formed around us. This forming gravity envisions space-time like a major stretchy cover. When something weighty like Earth is put on it, it makes an imprint in the sweeping. On the off chance that you place something more modest like a ball close to the Earth, it will move toward the mass. This is like how objects act in the case of gravity, not some baffling power, but rather a response to the bowing of space-time. General relativity provides a strong explanation for how things move in our planetary group, for example, planets circling the sun. It can precisely tell us the ways these planets take, including how Earth follows an oval shape around the sun. According to Brian, this is unique in relation to the old thought of gravity, which just arranged things and couldn't make sense of how planets move as they do. The groundbreaking idea is that reality is bent like a bendy texture, which fits better with what we notice. An essential moment that exhibited the rightness of general relativity happened during a solar eclipse in 1919. Sir Arthur Eddington led a group to see how light from far away stars bowed as it passed near the sun. As per the hypothesis, the sun's mass would make the starlight bend somewhat during the shroud. The perceptions matched Einstein's expectations, laying out the legitimacy of the hypothesis. Similarly, as movement can change how we experience time, as indicated by exceptional relativity, gravity likewise influences time. In places where gravity is especially amazing, time moves more gradually compared to regions with weaker gravity. So, assuming that you were standing near a gigantic item like a black hole, your clock would tick more leisurely than one set far away from the strong mass. General relativity presents the thought of black holes, which are locales where gravity is really extraordinary. Inside a black hole, the gravitational power is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape from it. The edge encompassing a black hole is known as the event horizon, and it resembles a final turning point. Once something crosses this limit, it gets maneuvered into the black hole with next to no chance of returning. Einstein's hypothesis of general relativity has huge implications for how the universe is organized. At first, he added something called a cosmological constant to his equations since he thought the universe was static. However, when we found it is extending, he alluded to this as a serious mix-up. The thought of an extending universe in view of general relativity is a critical piece of the Big Bang hypothesis, which explains how the universe started. One more significant idea from general relativity is gravitational waves. These are swells in the texture of existence brought about by exceptionally monstrous objects moving quickly, like when black holes or neutron stars converge. In 2015, researchers at the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory directly identified gravitational waves, providing verification of another part of Einstein's hypothesis. Over time, researchers have led various tests to confirm whether general relativity is valid, and each time it has shown to be right whether by seeing how planets move, the twisting of starlight, or the recognition of gravitational waves. While saying gravity is clearly false may astound, particularly since we all experience gravity each day, in the realm of physical science, it's not unexpected to examine and investigate various thoughts. 
research like Brian's frequently questions laid out speculations, and in the domain of gravity, some test the customary way we ponder this basic drive. One thought that challenges customary gravity is called modified Newtonian dynamics, MOND, which proposes that gravity acts distinctively at slow paces, especially in galaxies, without the need for dark matter. Instead of adding undetectable matter, MOND recommends that gravity strengthens at low paces. The gravity debate also includes the puzzling ideas of dark matter and dark energy, introduced to make sense of specific peculiarities in space. Critics contend that these aren't vital and that elective thoughts could represent what we notice. Some researchers who can't help contradicting Einstein's gravity hypothesis explore additional opportunities. For example, hypotheses including obscure particles or forces that could adjust or improve how we might interpret gravity. It's important to emphasize that in science, novel thoughts are not ignored. Rather, they are thoroughly tested to check whether they appear to be legit. For example, Einstein's thought about time in four-dimensional space, where time travel may be restricted by the speed of light, has been inventively considered alongside ideas like wormholes and shortcuts. Stephen Hawking's chronology protection conjecture suggests that traveling once more into the past appears far-fetched from a physical science perspective. Progressing trials and perceptions try to determine if these new speculations can make sense of peculiarities like the power of gravity in a way consistent with what we definitely know. While different thoughts have been examined, none have convincingly supplanted the notable rules of gravity. Questioning and testing are indispensable to challenge laid-out thoughts, parts of how science advances prompt further examination and a more profound comprehension of the universe. In the domain of gravity hypotheses, general relativity remains the most significant and fruitful one. Regardless of difficulties and elective thoughts, it reliably performs well in tests and makes sense of different peculiarities, like how planets move and how light curves around monstrous objects. General relativity remains solid since it is straightforward and incorporates many peculiarities. As recently discussed, Einstein's extraordinary hypothesis of relativity suggests that time can act distinctively based on how you're moving. Now, how about we investigate how this thought influences real situations, particularly in space travel? Space travel is energizing, but it's challenging since space is immense. Also, as indicated by Einstein's hypothesis, the speed of light is the quickest anything can go. This makes going between stars a huge test, even with cutting-edge innovation, due to the extended time it takes to reach the nearest stars. Consider the well-known twin paradox to comprehend what occurs with time when you travel in space. Picture this. One twin stays on Earth while the other twin goes on a quick excursion to a far-off star. At the point when the space-traveling twin returns, they figure out that less opportunity has passed for them than for their twin on Earth. This implies they have effectively traveled into the future. Time is vital for space voyagers because the more drawn out the venture, the additional time dials back. If space travelers were to visit close by stars, where time dials back significantly, they could age more leisurely than individuals on Earth. While this might seem like a sci-fi story, it's a certifiable impact from the hypothesis of relativity. Imagine if people sent a team to a star framework not excessively far away. Due to the massive distance, the excursion could take numerous years, regardless of whether they travel quick. For the space travelers on the spaceship, time would feel more limited due to the time expansion impact. However, on Earth, a lot of time would have passed. Widening influences affect living creatures as well as technology. GPS and communication gadgets on rockets must represent time expansion for exactness and proper working. Space travel at high velocities presents actual difficulties. For example, delayed confinement and openness to infinite radiation, as well as the mental impacts of being away from Earth for a drawn-out period. In our regular routines, we can notice the impacts of time widening in the global positioning framework. GPS depends on the exact timing of signs from moving satellites. Since these satellites experience time widening, it is pivotal to calculate these impacts for exact GPS computations. Neglecting to do so would altogether influence the accuracy of route systems. Presently, we should investigate why time moves in a single bearing. Time oversees our lives in the universe, moving from the past to the present and into the future. This one-way excursion of time is major to our reality. 
But why does time have this one-way nature? To comprehend, we check out at entropy, an idea that measures disorder or randomness in a framework. Entropy, connected to the bolt of time, will in general increase over the long haul, causing time to stream in one bearing. The second law of thermodynamics communicates this relationship, expressing that in any disconnected framework, all-out entropy will either increase or, best case scenario, remain steady. In basic terms, entropy normally tends to develop and doesn't decline on its own. Seeing how things end up being more disarranged around us helps us understand the one-way progression of time. Imagine a deck of cards, generally conveniently organized. If we mix them, they become chaotic and arbitrary. This change from order to jumble represents how time moves in one bearing, as seen in regular peculiarities like ice softening or a mixed mug of espresso becoming turbulent.